Hey everyone and welcome to my um, labor and delivery video. I know that this has been long awaited. He is right next to me sleeping in his little vibrating chair and I think he's waking up so let's see how many times I have to film this video but I'm sorry for the delay. Um, I am now three weeks and one day postpartum. <laughs> Um, life with a newborn is a little hectic and you need some getting used to and some routine. But we're finally getting into a routine and I'm ready to film and get back on YouTube. So here is my um, labor and delivery video. I have my notes down here. I was actually writing notes while I was in labor and delivery and after I wrote my story so that I won't forget any details. I have it for, you know, um, memory and every little thing I don't want to forget so um, I just actually finished posting maybe two days ago or actually yesterday my meet baby Isaac video so if you guys haven't checked that out go ahead and uh, check that out for you guys but for the most part um, we're doing great so we're just gonna get straight into the um, video and he's crying let me grab him. Okay, so let's get started. I have my little man here. I don't know if you guys can see him, but he's right here in my arms. So let's just get started. So on Monday, April the 15th, actually in the middle of the night, around 3 a.m., um, I started getting crampy. Um, I started getting and feeling like I was getting my period. Um, and then um, it wasn't going away. So um, I wasn't thinking nothing of it because... During my last month, I did get a lot of um, those times where I felt like I was getting my period and I felt a little bit crampy. Um, it only lasted about half an hour and would go away um, maybe four times that happened to me um, towards the last month of my pregnancy. But um, anyway, so I just didn't think nothing of it. The doctor had to, told me, I guess, on my last appointment as I described these feelings to him, that it was the beginning of... Um, uh, the uterus contracting so um, I knew that it was doing something but I didn't know like I, I didn't think nothing of it because it just happened to me um, you know more than um, a couple of times towards my last month so I just thought it was just a regular um, situation just one of those days um, then again hoping that it was something um, but anyways so like I was saying so about 3 p.m. I'm uh, sorry 3 a.m. in the morning on Monday the 15th uh, I started getting you know crampy like um, so I would that night I would use the bathroom a lot during the middle of the night so I would go to the bathroom and then as um, time went past it was getting a little bit more um, intensified so um, it got to the point where I had to breathe through them um, Sorry, it got to the point where I had to breathe to the, through them and my husband, I remember, um, was sleeping, obviously, and um, he had to go to work the next day, so what we had done is I went over to the living room and I decided to time them because I started noticing that I would get a break, like it would stop and then come back, so I headed over to the living room and I decided to stay up and time them and go through them by myself while, you know, he gets some rest. Um, you know for work or just in case uh, you know it is um, the real thing so I got up I got out of bed around 3 30 a.m. and then I went to the living room and I started timing them and I started noticing that they were about four to five minutes apart and I remember the doctor telling me that um, active labor or you know when it's time um, <laughs> he just farted Sorry. Um, when it's time, um, it should be four to five minutes apart and it should be constant for um, more than two hours. And that's how you know you're in active labor. So I was looking for that. Um, so I started to time them and they were about four to five minutes apart. Um, and they would last about one minute long. So they would vary between one minute to one minute and a half long. So um, as time went by, um, you know, it started getting closer together. It started getting to three to four minutes apart and then two minutes apart. Then it would go back to, um, I would have one strange one that would be five minutes apart. Then it would go back. So it was all over the place. But for the most part, it was um, never more than five minutes apart. Um, so after that, um, five, it was 5.30 in the morning. So two hours later, um, I two to two and a half hours later, I decided to call my mom and um, instead of just 
wake up my husband and not know. So I called uh, my mom for her opinion and um, she said that she was going to be coming over just in case it was the real thing. So um, at that point, my husband woke up and he was kind of um, anxious and kind of freaking out and he was getting last minute things in the hospital bag. Um, and then I decided to call the hospital. So I called the hospital and um, I had mentioned that um, you know, since 3.30 in the morning, or sorry, 3 a.m., I started having contractions. It's been two and a half an hour, a half hours, and they're um, anywhere between three to five minutes apart. So um, they had told us to come in and um, get um, assessed. So that's what we have done. So my dad, my mom was on her way, and my husband just wanted to go straight to the hospital, but I wanted to shower and freshen up first at this point the contractions were painful but they were manageable and they were I was able to um, obviously take a shower and I had enough time in between to um, relax so um, so that's what I did um, in the shower my um, contractions got way more intense I had to breathe through them and um, kind of make um, soothing sounds um, so that's what happened but I did find that the shower the hot water did relax me so I spent more than planned in the shower because I didn't want to get out and feel more pain because the shower was helping me so um, anyway so I decided to shave my legs <laughs> in the shower um, because they were growing in I had um, obviously always been prepared but I just wanted everything to be perfect so um, that's what I did so there I am in the middle of contractions trying to shave my legs um, never again but anyways, um, yeah, so that's what happened, and then um, I got out of the shower, and it was time, um, my mom had got, had actually, I got out of the shower, and my husband was rushing me, by the way, <laughs> um, so I got out of the shower, I was getting dressed, and obviously getting dressed in, with the contractions are worst, um, at this point, my contractions were really painful, so um, my mom had gotten there, um, I remember at, at this point the contractions, I think I was tearing up on them because they were, they were painful. So um, my mom had gotten there and uh, my husband was just finishing up putting the last minute things in the hospital bag. Um, and yeah, so we left the house about, sorry, let me just see my notes here. So yeah, so my mom got here about, um, I'm going to say six. And we left here about 6.15. Um, so um, I was starving when I left, but um, obviously I couldn't eat because I didn't want to have an accident or eat and have like a sick labor and vomit and things like that or even poo when I'm pushing. So I, we decided to stop by Tim Hortons on our way and dry, um, get pick up a coffee. So that's what we did. And we got to the hospital. Actually, my mom got there at 6.15 and we left at about um, yeah so we got to the hospital at about 7 p.m. sorry 7 a.m. and when we got to the hospital sorry um, when we got to the hospital I had to wait maybe a couple of minutes um, and then I met, I went inside the room, she asked me a couple of questions, and, um, she gave us the hospital bands, so one for me and one for the baby, and, um, then she, uh, we had to wait for two minutes for the room, like a triage room, to be available for me to get assessed, so that took about two minutes, and then I went ahead and I met my nurse from the triage, um, and I got, um, she asked me a couple of questions, she put me, she hooked me up to my, um, you know, the monitors to, uh, man to monitor his heartbeat and my contractions, so um, that's what I had happened, so then shortly after, she called in the doctor, and I loved my doctor, um, the doctor that I had throughout my pregnancy wasn't actually the one that delivered him, but um that's that's fine I'm okay with that but he was amazing um so he checked me and um surprisingly he said oh my god you're three centimeters dilated you're gonna have your baby today and I was shocked I was expecting um me to have like me to be like one centimeter dilated or I was shocked when he said that I was three centimeters um really shocked so I was ecstatic um 
And at that time, my husband took the time to call my um, family and say that we were getting, we were getting admitted. So um, at that time, the nurse said that while they were getting my labor room ready um, and cleaned up for me, that she was going to go ahead and start the IV. So let me tell you, the IV is worse than the epidural. And yes, I did end up getting an epidural halfway throughout um, the labor process, but um, you know, we'll get into that in, you know, as the story goes on. But, um, so she did give me the IV. The IV, it hurts a little bit, but like, it's something that you can manage, but it was way worse than the epidural. Uh, I thought that the epidural was going to be worse, but it, it was a little bit worse than the epidural, actually. The epidural for me was nothing, but, um, anyways, um, so yeah, so after that, she gave me the, sorry. After that, she gave me the, um, yeah, the IV, and then she started me on my first dose of anti, on my first dose of antibiotic, because yes, I did um, have strep B um, throughout uh, during the end of my pregnancy, so I needed to take the antibiotic before he would pass through the birth canal. So um, I had to take two doses. So they started my first dose, and then shortly after, I met I met my nurse, which she was amazing. I loved her. And um, then they took me to my labor and delivery room. I, when I got there, I, well, I really loved my labor and delivery room. It was really big and spacious and it was so nice. anyways, um, when I got into my um, labor and delivery room, I remember going into the bathroom and putting in my gown. And um, I remember later on um, actually getting down, sorry, lying down. And I remember my nurse saying, um, you know, I think if you want the epidural, then um, I think you should walk around um, and stay stretching and standing up because after you get the epidural, you have to be lying down the whole time. And I remember when I got checked in my triage, my doctor had asked me if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to get the epidural, and I said that I'm definitely open for the epidural, um, and for them to remind me um you know when that limit is you know like don't just let me go past and then say that i can't have the epidural and it's too late for the epidural um for me not to like you know pass that point without seeing if i want it and you know if i'm in obvious discomfort i want to be able to um get some relief so um for the most part when i got there um the anesthesiologist was available and um was available and I remember them offering it to me and um, I was in extreme discomfort and I said that I was willing yes to get it so um, the anesthesiologist came in and I was open to they asked me if I was open to doing an ultrasound for like a study and a survey but as well to pinpoint the exact location where they would want to put the epidural so the perfect spot so anything for me is that helps is the best so I was extremely open and it actually gave me some comfort and um, relaxed me a little bit knowing that they were going to do the ul ultrasound of the spine and actually pinpoint the exact location this way I don't know what I was thinking maybe I was thinking it would um, I guess lessen the chance of anything happening so I was extremely comforted by that um, it did uh, calm my nerves down a little bit more so um, during the epidural um, let me tell you that it was not painful at all. Um, <clears throat> it was quite, yeah, it was just, it was really, um, I don't know how to describe it. Okay, so I didn't feel anything at all. Um, I didn't feel no pain from the epidural. I didn't feel the, needy, the needle going in. I didn't feel anything at all. The only thing that I would say about the epidural, and this is my experience, um, and my opinion so it doesn't mean that everyone's gonna feel this way or you know other people have different experiences but this is my experience and um, with the upper zero the only thing that it kind of feels funny so the only thing that I felt was when they were already inside with the needle and they're trying to just put them in the locations and kind of moving it around it feels like you hit a funny bone or something it feels kind of awkward and funny that's the only thing about the epidural aside from the nerves obviously that you have from the, the fact that you can't move and it's such a, a procedure that's risky that was the only thing that was um, a big deal to me but my nurse was amazing she was there to soothe me talk to me and take my mind off it and another amazing thing is my husband was able to be in the room for me so that with me so that gave me a lot of comfort so um 
the fact that he was able to be there was amazing. So that was it. Um, so I got the epidural around, um, I have a feeling that I said this already. Anyways, <laughs> um, so I got the epidural around 10, no, around um, 9.20, so about an hour or two after my admission. Um, and then it started to kick, uh, kick in about 9.50 or 10 o'clock. Um, so when it kicked in, let me tell you, when I got the epidural, it made me extremely itchy. Um, I don't know what it is, but it made me really itchy. My back was really numb and itchy from lying on it, and I started to itch everywhere. It was extremely uncomfortable and really itchy for me. Um, I started scratching and trying not to scratch, and um, about half an hour after, the, that's when the symptoms started to kick in, about the itchiness. Um, that's the only thing that was really a symptom that I experienced from the epidural. Um, another thing, too, is the epidural, they did not... It did not numb everything so I was feeling a lot I was still feeling quite a bit when they had given me the epidural and I remember having this button beside me and um, I don't I'm not sure what was in it it wasn't the epidural but it was some sort of pain relief that you can click every 15 minutes to get um, it gives you a little dose of um, some pain relief on top of the epidural um, you know if you're feeling extreme discomfort I don't remember pressing it every 15 minutes but I did um, press it quite a bit. Um, I remember at one point, um, yeah, so then around 12, 10, um, the doctor checked me again and I was five centimeters dilated. So when I had gotten the epidural, I was four to five centimeters. And then around 12, I was five centimeters dilated, which I was also surprised, um, that I was uh, pro progressing pretty well and pretty quickly because normally they say that your first child, um, and your first birth and labor experience does take quite a, a while. So anyways, I was extremely happy. So when my doctor checked me, he had um, said that he would check me again at around 2.30. Um, he said that his estimate would be around 8 or 9 hours, um, around 8 hours from there, 8 or 9 hours from there, um, I'd be ready to push. That was his estimate and I remember when he checked me he said that I had a great pelvis and that he would um, he's gonna pass through beautifully and I remember um, feeling really comforted by that and um, just you know um, relieved so I felt yeah so that was a good thing and then I started feeling um, the contractions as I said from the epidural and things like that so um, Around 12.30 after the doctor checked me, they started the second dose of my antibiotic, which would be the last one. And, um, yeah, so, and then around um, 12.25 before um, I, um, before the second dose or whatever, um, I remember because I was feeling the contractions still, um, they, they weren't really understanding why, so uh, maybe she said, maybe it's her bladder, so let me empty out her bladder. So I remember her emptying out my bladder, and um, it was so weird because there was a lot of pee that came out. Sorry if this was TMI. And I did not feel like I had to pee, so the epidural was definitely making me numb. Um, so it was working. But anyways, for the most part, the epidural did work, but um, so yeah, so at this point, she emptied it out. I did feel a little bit more relieved, but I still were, uh, was indeed feeling it. So at this time, um, 1230, they started, they gave me a second dose of, um, they topped me up with uh, more epidural. And then um, they started my second um, dose of my antibiotic for my strep B, which would be the last dose. And then they um, also, because I was itching so much, she gave me Benadryl or Benalin. Benadryl also for my itchiness because it's not good to itch. So after that, I did feel a little bit more relief from the itchiness, thank God. Um, and uh, But I was still feeling the contraction. So, oh, after the second dose, I did not really feel, I did not feel the contractions. I was completely relieved. I was great. So that, that did it for me, the second dose. So, um... After that, um, with the Benadryl, so yeah, so then after that, that's what happened. So after an hour of getting a top up, um, I started feeling so much pain. 
um, I remember, yeah, I felt really, I felt a lot of pain. So I started feeling a lot of contractions. I thought it was contractions, but later on I'll tell you what it really was. But um, I was starting to feel the contractions again, and this was, it was really painful. It was really, really painful. I had to, it was painful. I was tearing up, and I was um, definitely really painful. Um, so they really didn't understand why I was feeling it, just because of the fact that I was so numb. Um, they started putting ice packs and saying, okay, do you feel this? Do you feel how cold is this? And I was really not feeling anything. So I was literally numb from my toes all the way to my neck. And I remember not even being able to lift my left leg up because I was so numb. Um, so at this point, um, they really didn't know what, why I was feeling this pain. So, um... The doctor said he was going to come around 12, 2.30 to, to, you know, check me and things like that. So around that time, actually around 1.30, so, um, so they ordered the doctor to come check me and see what's going on because, you know, I'm in so much pain, but they don't understand why. Um, so they came, he, um, at 1.30, he came in the room, and um, I was shocked because he checked me and he said, Amanda, you are 10 centimeters dilated, and what you're feeling is pressure. I was shocked. In the matter of two hours after I was five centimeters dilated, I was ready. No, after an hour of five being five centimeters dilated, I was ready to push. So I literally dilated five centimeters within an hour and a half. So so um, he had told me that I was 10 centimeters dilated. Sorry, I had to pick the little man up. Um, he's a little gassy, but... Anyway, so he had told me that I was 10 centimeters dilated and um, told me that within an hour t I would be able to start pushing um, and uh, really they just wanted him to just come down a little bit more and um, the way he was positioned, he was head down, obviously he's been head down since 33 weeks, since I was 33 weeks pregnant, but his position, he was head up instead of being facing downwards um, and he said that usually that process like they do that when they're in their birth in the birth canal so he wasn't just there yet so she had um sorry so at this point my nurse had taken her lunch break and um for one hour and I had a substitute um nurse I'm sorry what happened baby hmm? um but yeah so at this point my nurse had taken her lunch break so yeah, so while that was happening, um, one minute, um, yeah, so I, and I got a substitute nurse. So around, um, 2 p.m. after the doctor had left, sorry, <laughs> um, after the, oh, my baby. So after the doctor had left, um, I started to feel really um, out of it. I felt really nauseous and um, I guess from all the medication and the drugs, um, I felt really out of it and I was having a lot of heartburn and um, I remember having some things coming up my throat and back down and everything was just backing up to the point where I felt like I was going to throw up. So I had to tell my husband to hurry up and give me the trash can where he held my hair and I threw up um, about <laughs> four times um, in that in that garbage can right after I threw up I felt really relieved and just ready to take on um, the rest of my labor and delivery um, I remember um, but yeah so for the most part <laughs> yeah um, I remember when the doctor said that um, yeah, so I was going to start pushing in an hour. So around 2 p.m., that's when I threw up because I felt so drugged out. And um, I remember Johnny started getting emotional at that time when he, because he knew that it was just going to happen in a matter of, you know, minutes. So that's what happened. And then, um, right, maybe that was, yeah, so maybe 40 minutes later, um, the nurses, you know, said that, I was feeling a lot of pressure. I was feeling extreme pressure, and I remember it finished, and then um, I was okay. 
and then the doctor said okay um no the nurse said okay let's just do some practice pushes and at, by by this time I, my my nurse was already back um and so i did one practice push and i remember her telling me to stop and then she got on the phone and called the doctor right away and the doctor came in and said wow um you're ready to push and um so i remember them rushing and getting their gloves on and getting their things together and my husband was holding my leg and just looking and then the doctor said okay push once and i pushed and he said okay stop 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 and then um, he told me, give me your hand. And I remember giving him my hand and he put it down there and I felt his head and I started getting emotional and really just, oh, and I couldn't believe that he was already there. Like, I couldn't believe it, that it was just that easy for me. I felt just so, um, like, you know, really easy. And, um, but yeah, so... <laughs> It was amazing and then um, he so I remember um, at that time you know um, that was 250 I you know started to push at 250 and then I remember pushing I just loved my doctor because he was just so careful with everything he was just so gentle and just involving I, like you know my husband and I and everything and um, I remember my pushing just came naturally. I remember just pushing and it was just, you know, they're like, yeah, like that, like right away. Like, yeah, that's perfect. That's keep doing that. You're doing great. And I remember I wasn't even, it wasn't even hard for me to push. And I don't want to be bragging. This is just my experience. Um, I remember it was just so easy for me and um, it just came as a breeze. Like I wasn't even pushing hard at all. Um, and I remember at one point the doctor told me to stop and then he even applied a gel and and everything I guess from taking precautions for me not to tear he was just amazing and I I remember pushing six times and um, this little guy was out and I remember just me pushing and then the doctor said look look at your baby and he turned his head and his body was still in me and it was just his head out and he was looking straight. I looked down and he was just right there, the baby. He was looking right at me. He had his eyes wide open and I just burst out crying. And at that point, I just grabbed him and, you know, they just pulled him out of me and placed him on me and started cleaning him. And I remember he held in his cry. And um, I remember my husband throughout the whole thing. I just was shocked how engaged he was and he was there looking and he was, oh my God, like, babe, he's right there. Like, you're almost, yeah, you're doing great. And I remember, and it was just so amazing. Within 10 minutes, he was out. I started pushing at 10 and he was born at, sorry, 2.50 and he was born at 3. So it took me um, exactly 10 minutes to push and he was already out. And I remember he held in his cry and the nurse, um, the nurses and the doctor tried to patting his back to get him to cry. And he did cry, but it was just such a little cry. And oh, that, that cry, when you hear that cry, it's just so amazing. And um, yeah, so immediately they put me for, to do skin to skin. And um, that was just the most amazing thing um, when you get to do skin to skin. Um, Oh, and then I remember while out we were doing skin to skin, um, they took out my placenta, was, which was the most, I think it was just the worst part of it at all. It wasn't excruciating pain, but my labor was just so amazing and blessed that I didn't even, the placenta was the worst part for me. Um, I remember when he was out and we were doing skin to skin and, you know, after everyone came and to meet him, um, I was saying within half an hour that he was born that I could do it all over again and I really could and to tell you the truth I could have done it without the epidural I could have done it without the epidural um if I knew that I was just it was going to be so fast um and that great I was gonna do it with I would I could have done it without uh, and I give you know props to moms that um are able to go all natural you guys are just amazing and you know um really strong women and I really um admire all, each of each and every one of those people who could do it without the epidural but um yeah so I was able to I think I could go without the epidural and um I didn't feel a thing 
when I was pushing him. I didn't feel not one thing. I didn't feel burning. I didn't feel pressure. I didn't feel nothing, you know, and um, I was able to push and he was out in 10 minutes and I had no tears at all. So thank God for that. Um, everything just went well. My recovery went well. Everything went well. And um, I'm really thankful for that. So, so I think that's about it for my labor and delivery. If you guys have any questions, you guys can just leave them in the comment comments below, and um, I respond to every each and every comment. Um, and I thank you guys for all your support and um, throughout the whole pregnancy and everything. And um, and I hope that you guys will all. Um, you know, embark in this new journey um, of me being a first-time mom here on YouTube, and um, yeah, so there's going to be lots of exciting new videos coming up, and um, you know, my first my first month postpartum, and his first month update, and um, you know, newborn must-haves and things like that, so maybe a day in the life if you guys want to see that with a newborn. Um, so just let me know, and um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and um, I will show you guys him. Here he is, just wonderful as ever, and I'm just so in love, and he's just the most precious little thing ever. So I just want to thank you guys all, and um, thank you guys so much for everything. So then again, um, he was 7 pounds, 3 ounces, and 20 inches long, and I don't know if that's the circumference.